was in a desperate state. 180,000 units around the world built cheap and now falling apart. Facing a billion dollar repair bill, Congress had a big idea. Turn the housing over to private companies and let the free market do its work. But as CNN's Deborah Farrick reports, for many families living in those homes, that big idea has been a disaster. And the men and women who serve to protect us are fighting a losing battle at home. When these sailors and Marines left the U.S. to serve their country, no one imagined many would come home to this. So you know people who are affected in this house? And then over in this house, mm -hmm. and that house. Norfolk Naval Base in Virginia is the largest in the world, home to the U.S. Atlantic Fleet. But it's facing a crisis. I'm, in essence, combating a war on two fronts. I don't feel safe in these houses. I've never no. not felt safe in a house. A crisis that has turned dozens of military families, their children and pets into virtual refugees hold up in cramped hotel rooms for weeks at a time. They call this hotel wing the Mold Wing. She was hospitalized. Displaced families who tell us they or their kids are sick after living in rotting homes and being exposed in some cases to unhealthy levels of mold. Roughly how many times have you either been to a doctor or been to the emergency room because of your illnesses or the illnesses of your kids, if you had to guess? Half a dozen times? 50. Yeah. 50. Yeah. They told me it was stress. They told me it was stress and um, a panic attack until they found the lesions on my brain. I lost all mobility on my left side in October. They thought I was having a stroke. Although a direct link is described by these young women are consistent with possible effects of mold exposure, according to the Centers for Disease Control and the World Health Organization. Military wives who were getting sicker and sicker say their living conditions were ignored or covered up by a private management company. Lincoln Military Housing, or LMH, is a subsidiary of one of the largest property management firms in America. After Congress privatized military family housing, Lincoln partnered with the Navy in 2005, taking control of renovating old homes and building new ones in the Norfolk area in exchange for guaranteed rent. The Navy was thrilled. Our long-term partnership with Lincoln has been extremely successful. We've been able to accomplish things in terms of providing quality homes uh, I don't think we ever would have accomplished. Gerald Bliss runs Lincoln Military Housing. Under the terms of the contract, within a two-year period, all homes were supposed to be brought up to a suitable level. Was that done, in your opinion? And by suitable, I mean all of them livable. Yes, I believe it was under the terms of our agreement with the Navy. We have an obligation to the families. We want to provide them great housing, suitable housing, comfortable housing. Right. They try to blame our mold on our dogs. Yet military spouses we spoke with tell a very different story. The second story was sinking into the first. My house is like a moat. It lives in a puddle of water. A story of decaying homes and well-meaning but incompetent maintenance people. Right here is my home. Shelly Federico moved into Lincoln Military Housing October 2010. When she moved out a year later, she had filed more than two dozen complaints with Lincoln Maintenance related to water damage and penetration. They would send someone out and they would say, oh, Ms. Federico, no problems. We were just going to need to clock your window. Shelly says she developed intake and sinus problems, persistent headaches, skin lesions, and chronic fatigue. Doctors could find no cause. But she says it clicked the day a maintenance man came to remove a section of bedroom wall. He started taking the insulation out of the walls, and as he was carrying it through my house, there was water dripping out of the insulation that he had just gathered from the wall. Um, as soon as he did that, I immediately started projectile vomiting. My eyes started to swell. It started to get very hard for me to breathe. When Shelly demanded a mold test, Lincoln instead explained the company had decided to move Shelly and her family to a new home. When I asked Lincoln Military Housing, they told me that there was no need for a test. She says Lincoln refused to consider mold as a possibility. Who had it done independently? All of you. Paying up to $500 each, Shelly and others hired their own mold inspectors. Results confirmed what they already suspected. 
So one of the readings was 33,000. What's a normal reading? Zero. I was actually told by a remediator, you're very lucky that you found it when you did. If you would have continued to live this way this whole time, not knowing, you would probably be dead. All right, this is Shelly Federico's house. Federico's Lincoln's home. Gerald Bliss took us to see okay. Shelly's former home, which remains vacant because it's now the focus of a lawsuit. There's a smell in this house, and, and I understand whether it's just general must, but there's a distinct yeah, it's just, just a, heaviness in this house. No, you don't smell it? Well, I, I, I do a bit, but... We asked about the high levels of mold spores in Shelly's test. There's been three other reports that have been completed. And what, what did they tell you about this house? That they, did, they didn't have, they had low levels. Lower levels in the report that, that I saw? Yes. But CNN reviewed two of the mold reports, both of which confirmed significant levels of mold. Lincoln could not share the results of its own independent test because it's being sued by military families. Lincoln knew it was inheriting hundreds of older, poorly built homes. And while Bliss denies a systemic mold problem, he admits maintenance fell short. I understand why some of the families are frustrated in this, in this issue. I'd be frustrated too with some of the things that went on. We've made mistakes and we're working through those mistakes. But that's not good enough for the families. Lincoln is now fighting a lawsuit by Shelley and others that claims the company's failure to properly maintain their homes caused them serious health problems. You know, we're sending our men and women to go fight for this country. We don't ask for a mansion on the hill. We just ask for a safe place to lay our head at night. It's not going to make us sick. It's not going to make our family sick. That's all we ask. When we come back, was Lincoln trying to save costs, to cut corners? 100% yes. Housing crisis, decades in the making. But it didn't fix it either. As a result, many military families are living in toxic homes. Deborah Fayrick's special investigation continues. As the new landlord, Lincoln Military Housing did put in new appliances, fixtures, cabinetry, and carpeting, taking homes from this to this. But it appears aging homes continued to be plagued by water damage, persistent leaks, and more harmfully, mold. And more and more families were falling mysteriously ill. What kind of illnesses have you had? Um, sinus infections, respiratory infections, the nausea, the vomiting, the diarrhea. The families we spoke to believe Lincoln was avoiding what it knew to be a huge problem. There was a lot of mold when I first started. Meet Danette Smith. She worked 10 years for the Navy and was among the first team hired by Lincoln when it took over military housing in 2005. In your opinion, was Lincoln trying to save costs, to cut corners? 100% yes. They did not want to spend the money due to the units. Eventually, we're going to be torn down or they mainly concerned on 100% occupancy. How were they remediating the mold? Covering it. How? They would cover it with cleaning it with bleach and then painting over it. They put a Band-Aid over anything the cheapest way possible to make it not visible and for a resident to come in to not say anything. Lincoln denies Smith's allegations. She was fired for overspending on housing maintenance. Fast forward to today, with families getting mysteriously sick and Lincoln denying a problem, families desperately turn to the Navy for help. She was actually there with me yeah, that day. But it's out of our hands. We can do, and I would ask him, please, sir, you know, I found a doctor that can help us. He said, you know what? You see, you see those helicopters over there? That's what I do, <clears> and I don't do anything more than that. And I said, but, sir, you're the rear admiral of the space. Can you help us? I'll pass the information along. That man is Rear Admiral Tim Alexander, whose housing staff directs service members to Lincoln Housing. We're there to support our families and to ensure that they are being treated properly. And from the bottom of your heart, do you believe that the Navy acted that way? Because a lot of families would say otherwise. I do believe that in every instance where we were informed that they had a problem with their landlord, uh, we have fully engaged on their behalf, yes. The Navy's housing crisis came to a boil in December when a local TV reporter contacted by Marine wife Shelly Federico started looking into the allegations. After Shelly's story spread through the neighborhood, 
other Navy family started coming forward, telling News Channel 3 their stories. The floodgates opened. Navy and Marine wives who had never met before came out by the dozens. At an emergency town hall meeting, U.S. Senator Mark Warner, who himself has a daughter with asthma, listened in disbelief. It's been 20 years in business, and I voted. This is not a way to run a business. What struck me was, here were these Navy spouses with their husbands deployed defending our country, and they were living in substandard housing. I mean, this is not how we should be treating the families of the guys who are defending our country. When Lincoln tried to defend itself with its own test results suggesting no mold was present, Senator Mark Warner demanded Lincoln fire its mold inspectors, telling the Navy to step in and do its job overseeing its public-private partnership with Lincoln. Many of the families feel that the Navy dropped the ball when it came to oversight. I think the Navy, if they didn't drop the ball, they took their eye off the ball. Lincoln is now doing what desperate families for months had been asking. They're finally offering free mold tests for anyone who wants one, and if necessary, remediating the mold. Lincoln and the Navy are not doing this out of the goodness of their heart. They're doing it because they got caught. They got caught. Lincoln says it has fired 10 employees, hired a community liaison, and is reviewing its 4,400 homes. Lincoln representatives were denying there was a problem. The Navy was denying there was a problem. Now all of a sudden there's been a 180 degree reversal and you guys are now acting on it. Well, we've, we've made mistakes and we're, we're not happy about what happened here. And I think we've, we've recognized that. It's no secret that government contracts are lucrative contracts, but devil's advocate, why should anyone give you any more money given what has happened with these families. Well, we have to we have to prove ourselves again. And we have to compete for the families, uh, their rental dollars. The Navy is now promising to live up to its end of the deal. One of our lessons learned has been in this particular partnership and for the time being, that we need to increase the amount of oversight that we provide sort of at the deck plate level. And that's what they found in my, my bathroom. You're asking these families who already have enough going on to trust Lincoln and to trust you. And a lot of families are saying, uh-uh. Well, uh, certainly we want to restore that trust across the board and we will do that one family at a time. But for those who are sick and feel they were lied to, that could take a very long time. These things should have been condemned a long time ago, and they weren't. I don't want to move back into that house. I don't care what they've done to that house. They can rip out every single wall. They can rip up every piece of carpeting. It's not going to be safe. To date, Lincoln Military Housing has inspected nearly all of its 4,400 homes. So far, they say 68 homes have required full remediation. But despite their track record, the company gets to keep that lucrative Navy contract for the next 40 years.